G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to be doing another look at some trade predictions because, you know, 16 out of the 18 teams have been eliminated from the uh, the season so far. So as such, this is the period where, you know, a lot of rumors and things are going to happen, especially with the week off before the grand final. But we're going to start hearing a lot about potential moves. So I thought I'd do a little video touching base. I did a video like a month or two ago called AFL Trade Predictions. Wasn't sure whether to call this one predictions or not because it's kind of just going to be more of a recap of the things that we're hearing and where players are likely to go and maybe a bit of opinion on, you know, what I think is the right move. Obviously can't cover every single trade story in one single video, just not made of time. But I'm going to pick some of the key ones that have caught my eye over the last few days and give a little bit of a summary of what's going on. Before we get into the video, guys, as you should be aware by now, I am trying hard to strive for 15,000 subscribers by grand final day and I need your help only about 50% of people who watch my videos have actually subscribed so if you do enjoy the videos I would really appreciate you taking the two seconds it takes to click that red button and subscribe to the channel you'd be really helping me out on top of that just know that this video is brought to you by the sponsors of the true footy YouTube channel manscape.com you can get some pretty awesome products the lawnmower 4.0 which is you know a ceramic bladed waterproof body shaver that you can use in the shower to manscape come on guys it's 2020 one we can all get a little bit better at our manscaping routine and manscape are the perfect people to help they've launched in australia and you can get 20 percent off and free shipping using the code true 20 all caps all one word not only do they have you know the actual body shaving products but they have things like the crop mop ball wipes as well which have come in handy believe me there's even such thing as a ball deodorant which i didn't know existed until i met the guys at manscape but you know summer's coming up it's going to be a pretty handy thing 20 percent off and free shipping is a great offer so if you if you're interested in these products, go check out manscaped.com and use my discount code. All right, let's get into some trade talk. So we'll kick it off with the easy ones. It appears this first one is all but confirmed. Essendon are gaining Jake Kelly from the Adelaide Crows as an unrestricted free agent. He's a good player, played 20 games this year, so certainly not on the outer at Adelaide. I believe he's a key player. And this one surprised me a little bit. It seems like he's pretty much wrapped up to join Essendon there. And um, that might have probably surprised me a little bit. Looking at Essendon's back line, I thought... You know, it's it's fairly strong, to be honest. I didn't think Jake Kelly was necessarily a player of need, and it'll be interesting to see how he fits in because, you know, in terms of quality, he's certainly going to be expecting to be a best 22 player there. So it is a blow for Adelaide, and unfortunately for them, he's an unrestricted free agent, which means he can walk straight to the Essendon Footy Club, and that's definitely a blow because I think he's a, a pretty good quality player. But on the flip side of that, wasn't one of the top 10 players at the club. Otherwise, he would have been a restricted free agent. So a good get for Essendon there, and uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly how he fits into that team. The next trade rumour, it's not so much a rumour, it seems confirmed that Jordan Dawson has requested a trade away from the Sydney Swans to go back to South Australia. There's a little bit of talk that it was for personal reasons, and maybe that's true, but there was definitely some talk around how much Sydney could really afford to pay the players and keep all the out-of-contract players that they wanted to. So the talk before all this was that it was a choice between Luke Parker, George Hewitt, Jordan Dawson, and guys like that. Dylan Stevens is another one. Not necessarily just picking one of them, but if they were going to sign someone like a Luke Parker, which they have now done, it was likely going to come at the expense of a couple or even three of the other players. So as such, we will talk about those three Sydney boys. So Dawson is probably the biggest loss of the three. He's a really quality player. If he's requesting to go back to South Australia, then maybe the personal reasons are quite valid. So I'm not too sure how much money was a factor, but you'd have to think he probably wasn't being offered what he is worth on the open market by the Swans, who are a little bit tied up with the Buddy Franklin money. And of course, signing Luke Parker up, he's just had you know one of the better seasons of his career. I think the Swans did the right thing in terms of, you know, they had to offer Luke Parker a fair deal. He's a champion player. He's, he's going to be looked upon for, you know, generations to come as a great player for the Sydney Footy Club. And losing him to a Victorian side on the basis of money would have been a blow. So I, I don't blame Sydney in terms of, um, you know, the fact that something had to give to sign up Luke Parker. But it is a blow for the Swans. You know, Jordan Dawson is a really quality player in that sort of middle tier bracket in terms of age, because I think that's probably one area the Swans lack. They've got some great older players, some of the best youth in the competition other than some genuine guns in Heaney, Mills and Papley I'd say that middle part of their list is the part that maybe needed a little bit of uh, consolidation and unfortunately Jordan Dawson's going the wrong direction he's been more linked to Port Adelaide from my understanding they currently have peak 17 it's probably not going to get the deal done on its own so this will be interesting to see exactly what they're able to stump up for him the next player is George Hewitt another player who I'd say he had a really quality year I think it was last year this year statistically hasn't really 
you know, uh, back that up. But obviously, it's still a good player in that middle tier bracket as well for the Swans. And I think he's been linked to Carlton. I think he's a South Australian boy, obviously not motivated by going home as such. But, you know, sometimes you have to look after yourself in terms of the best contract. If you're getting low balled, you know, maybe it is time to move on. Carlton will be an interesting sort of suitor for Hewitt because I, I think they definitely need to reinforce that midfield. And the, the only thing is they've been linked to guys like Adam Chera in particular. So it can't in my eyes, be a case of both Chera and Hewitt. This may either be a plan B to Adam Chera or, you know, maybe they've fallen a little bit out of the Adam Chera race. I'm not too sure. Carlton's picks are only 6, 25 and 61 this year. And you can obviously trade future picks in that as well. But the all the collateral to trade for the, both of those players, uh, it's going to get a little bit tight. So I think it, personally, if they're going hard after Hewitt, it may suggest to me that they're probably backing off a little bit off Adam Chera. Could be wrong on that, but that's just the way I read it. The third player Sydney are probably going to lose is Dylan Stevens. It seems like it's talked about as though he's not really a good chance to stay at the Swans, which is unfortunate for them. He was a top five pick uh, in the 2019 draft, if I'm not mistaken. Hasn't really clicked at AFL level yet, but it is very early days. He's a quality outside runner, uses the ball well, and I think he's going to be a good pickup for virtually any team in the league. You could make a case for them picking him up. Either way, he's been linked to South Australia uh, between you know Adelaide and Port Adelaide, but also I've seen something recently linking him to Collingwood, and the Collingwood one and interesting for me because they have Nick Dacos this year and only entered the draft at 36 and 39. So for me, it's it's interesting to see what they plan to offer up for a Dylan Stevens type. Do they, you know, delve into their first or second round pick next year to get Stevens? Maybe Stevens comes at a discount because Sydney can't simply afford him. For a side that is allegedly having salary cap issues, it's interesting to me that Collingwood would have you know, their finger in so many different pies, so to speak, this offseason. So again, it may be a case of Collingwood's got a number of, of targets and Stevens, you know, maybe first, second, third or fourth on that, at least I I'm not too sure. But that will influence how likely they are to get Stevens because, uh, as I said, they've been linked to a few players. Either way, it's, it's hard to really assess what Stevens is worth on the open market. I'd say maybe a pick in the top 20 is what I would realistically offer for Stevens. You've got to discount it a little bit because he hasn't, you know, really proven himself at AFL level. He's out of contract but he's also a former top five pick. So I don't think he should go cheaply. We'll just touch on the Lockie Neal saga a little bit. We did a video on Drewsy's channel um, discussing the likelihood of it. And for those who aren't aware, he sort of, it was leaked that he was considering a move back to Perth two years into a four year contract. And then as soon as the pressure in the media came on, he kind of retracted that and said, no, I'm, I'm committed to the Brisbane Lions. For me, I, I always thought it was really unrealistic that Neal would head back to Fremantle this off season with two years on his contract. Brisbane hold all the bargaining power and they're right in the premiership sort of mix so why would you let a player walk back to Fremantle putting aside the fact that I think it's questionable from Neil to to sort of make the decision that he wants to raise his family in Perth I think he probably should have considered that when he left Perth two years ago but either way I think if he's serious there's a good chance this does happen in a year or two um, especially maybe even next year he's be too expensive now but with one year left on his deal Fremantle might be a bit more interested in stumping up the asking price especially if they have a relatively good year and get close to finals Got a gut feeling that Lockie Neal will end up at Fremantle, but it probably won't happen this year. But crazier things have happened the week before trade period or even during trade period. Another Adelaide boy, Daniel Talia, was told that he is no longer required by the club. And uh, it's a little bit of a shame because, you know, he's still got some footy left in him. Uh, and he's been a great player for the Adelaide Crows over that stretch. But it kind of makes sense with, the, you know, the, the list direction that Adelaide are taking. They obviously don't want to spend that money on a player that uh, is probably maybe going to inhibit someone like a Fisher Mackesy down the track. So what do you do with a, a quality key position defender? I think there's going to be a, a bit of a demand for him, to be honest. In particular, I'd be looking at clubs who may be at the top of the ladder who need to reassure their sort of back line. I'm looking at Richmond in particular. I think he's been linked to Richmond. Asprey's just retired and they've had is issues with, you know, Bolter and uh, Broad. I think Bolter's done his ACL. So it'd be interesting to see how long he's out. But the Bulldogs are another one for me who probably need a strong key position presence for a team that's probably going to be in the premiership mix for the next three to five years. They've got some tall guys like Keith and I think shaki has gone back there a little bit this year, but it's probably worth the experiment of acquiring someone like Italia. I know his brother used to play there and I don't know if the relations have soured after that because he doesn't seem to be linked to the Bulldogs but I think that is probably a natural one or it will be Richmond. Just touching on my club for the moment, it seems to be uh, a little bit of a salary cap squeeze to say the least the, with all the, you know, the the COVID reductions in total player payments, the way teams have planned their lists, it's put a lot of pressure on them. And I think the Eagles are right at the forefront of the list of those teams. They've just offered Redden apparently a one-year deal, which is 
apparently quite a low ball, which is unfortunate for a guy who's had a pretty good season. Vardy was offered basically a rookie contract and he decided he could make more money, you know, in another career path. And, you know, all the best to him, to be honest. The Eagles have still not signed Josh Kennedy and Shannon Hearn. And I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see how much of that is they're not sure what's going to happen or is it just in the negotiation stages? Because from the sounds of it, every single dollar is going to count for the Eagles. The one that alarms me that's out of contract is Josh Rotham. He's played 19 games this year and I heard a little dirty big footy rumor the Eagles are considering delisting him, which makes me feel a bit sick, to be honest. I think he was dropped unfairly towards the end of the year. And I think he's, I don't want to sound like an Eagles nuffy, but I, I feel like he's one of the few potential young guys on our list under 23 or 24 that could, could genuinely be an All-Australian one day. So if we let him go, I will be seething. In terms of trades, though, Jared Brander is still unsigned, and it seems like a foregone conclusion. He's going to join uh, probably a Victorian club. He's been linked to Hawthorne, uh, but now it sounds like Geelong have uh, renewed interest in them, I think. He was supposed to be part of the Tim Kelly deal when Geelong were you know, trying to get absolutely everything out of us and more or less succeeded, but uh, I think they obviously rate that player, and they need a bit of a regeneration of youth at that, at that club as well. So I think he'll probably go to Geelong, and probably cheaply, unfortunately. The Adam Chera thing seems to be still quite up in the air he's been linked to Melbourne now um, which you know baffles me a little bit I can understand why he'd want to play for Melbourne uh, the best team in the comp right now arguably and all-star midfield the, the issue with that is uh, I don't know why Melbourne really want to pursue a player that's likely going to cost them quite a lot I think he's a great player but Melbourne's midfield is pretty bloody stacked. The other thing is, what do they offer up for him? Because I think uh, Fremantle are typically a little bit hard to deal with at the trade table, and, and they've had to be, and I actually respect that about them because they've lost players and done a pretty good job of extracting value out of those trades. But, you know, apparently they've asked for Luke Jackson. I think that is beyond unrealistic. But I suppose in their situation, they, they might as well play hardball. But it, other than that, Melbourne have picks 33 and 42 this year, and I suppose you could offer a future first. But... I don't know if they're going to have enough to uh, satisfy the uh, the Dockers in a deal here. So I, I touched on, you know, Carlton to Chera before. I think that deal makes a little bit more sense. But uh, reading the tea leaves a little bit, I'm not sure how realistic that is going to be. Pat Lipinski is still without a home for next year. And uh, listening to, I think it was Sam Edmonds on AFL Trade Radio, Carlton are not so much realistically in the race. And for the reasons I've touched on in this video, that, that makes sense to me. The other two teams he was linked to were Collingwood and Hawthorne. Collingwood's another one who, you know, they're targeting several players. And is Lipinski, you know, plan C? Because I feel like there's a few other players that might be more prominently on their radar. And again, you know, they talk about their salary cap issues. They're probably going to pay, you know, a reasonable contract to extract him from the Bulldogs. So uh, that's one to watch for me. But he's also been linked to Hawthorne. And I could see that one being a little bit more realistic. Callum Coleman-Jones is still linked to a move away from the Tigers, uh, which is a shame for them because he's pretty decent, you know, key forward prospect. I think the teams he's been linked to were North Melbourne and Gold Coast. I guess North Melbourne, you know, they overlooked McDonald in the draft last year and people thought, oh, you, your key forward stocks aren't quite that good. So why are you overlooking you know, in, in many people's opinion, the best key forward in that draft. Obviously, they preferred Will Phillips, and that's fine. So if they, uh, that makes sense to me that they're going for a Coleman Jones to maybe pair up with Nick Larkey long term. And in terms of the Gold Coast, you know, uh, the cynical part of me thinks is this a contingency for Ben King leaving? I really hope not. Um, that would more likely be in 12 months if it does happen. But either way, they're probably looking for a long term partnership with Ben King. So that would be an interesting one to watch. The other team I think that should throw their hat in the ring is Collingwood, who genuinely need you know a key forward presence with. The midfield talent that they've recruited, uh, and that you know, the small talent as such, they I don't know if a Lipinski or a Dylan Stevens should be a greater priority than Coleman Jones. Um, and I also think they should be looking at Sam Wiedemann, who I'll touch on shortly. Luke Dunson is another player who has been told he does not have another contract with the Saints, he'll be an unrestricted free agent and essentially delisted, really. I think he's about 26, so relatively in the prime of his career. He's a decent player, not the best ball user, but he, he's a pretty good ball winner. So I could see him certainly adding value to an established list. So I guess you'd be looking at teams who are right at the top of the ladder who need immediate midfield depth or teams at the bottom who sort of uh, are willing to pay, you know, a higher contract to sort of nurture the other midfield talent that they have. I think he's been publicly linked to Carlton and Gold Coast. Carlton, you know, need that midfield depth. But again, like I said, I think there's probably some better options on the market. They certainly can't get them all. And I guess the Gold Coast Suns make sense because they've got a lot of young midfielders in that team. And I think it could pay for them to sort of invest in the here and now a little bit to sort of take the pressure off the development that's happening there. If that makes sense, you don't want your coach, you know, 
know, being talked about as getting sacked every other week um, because your team's winning six or seven games a season. If they do invest in a mature midfielder, I think that that could be of benefit to them. And I don't think it's going to come at a big cost because like I said, he was essentially delisted. Just on Sam Weedman, this is a really interesting one. The fact that he's out of contract, um, that speaks to me like he's probably gone. Uh, I know Melbourne is still in the finals race right now, but he's lost his spot in the finals team to Ben Brown and you know, Ben Brown's still got a bit of footy left in him. So if Sam Wiedemann wants to crack regular ga- AFL games, you know, tomorrow, which is likely what he wants, then Melbourne probably doesn't make sense. Collingwood really speaks to me as as a clear candidate. And again, it comes down to, you know, how much money they're going to have to pay him because, you know, going off previous years, I think there was a rumor Wiedemann wanted 800k a year. I think he's certainly not worth that now. But either way, they're probably going to offer a reasonable contract. So I think Collingwood need to be right in the mix for Wiedemann, to be honest. A good, a good young talent, but they don't really have a strong key forward talent on their list. So I think Wiedemann makes sense. And I think his dad played for them as well. So yeah, it makes sense. Speaking of key forwards, there's a little bit of talk about Jack Gunston leaving the Hawthorne Footy Club. The two candidates are Collingwood, like I said, uh, and the Brisbane Lions. And I, I struggle to see how either of these sides are a great sp- uh, fit for him. Brisbane, yes, they've lost Hipwood. So that kind of makes sense. But all things considered, when you've got Danaher and McStay in that team as well, do they take a punt on Gunson for a single year? Because I think when Hipwood gets back, then it becomes a bit of a selection headache. So Gunson needs to be sort of cognizant of the fact that, you know, if he does go there, it's probably just for the one year. And I think he's probably got a little bit more footy in him than that. And the same thing with Collingwood. Collingwood are not, you know, contending for a flag right now. So investing in a 30-year-old as a sort of short-term solution to kick more goals, you know, I, d- I don't know if that makes sense either. And he's probably going to cost more than they'd be willing to pay. So I think Sam Edmonds again said that he's more likely to stay. And to be honest, that makes sense to me. I think he should stay at Hawthorne. A couple of last ones to rattle off and finish the video. Uh, Fremantle might be acquiring a couple of targets in Sam Petrovsky, seaton and Jordan Clark. And these make sense to me. Obviously, there's probably more going out than in this off-season with Fremantle with Adam Chera requesting a trade and it's hard to imagine they're going to change his mind while Sam Petrovsky, seaton and Jordan Clark probably aren't well certainly aren't as talented as Adam Chera in my opinion they probably do still need to add a couple of players in that under 24 age bracket that have a bit of talent I think Sam Petrovsky, seaton is pretty open to a move to Perth from the sounds of it not quite flourishing at Carlton uh, the, the way people expected. I think he was a top five pick, if I'm not mistaken. And lots has been said about Jordan Clark wanting uh, a trade somewhere, you know, to play more football at the highest level because he's not getting that at Geelong. So I, I think both of those players could realistically end up at Fremantle. Like I said, with West Coast salary cap issue, I don't think they're really in the frame to recruit anyone this off season. So uh, most of the kids wanting to come home are likely just going to consider Fremantle. Finally, a player I'd almost forgotten about, Tom Lynch of the Adelaide Crows, again, has been told he doesn't have a future at the club, but I still think he's got a little bit to offer at AFL level and to me, it probably would be a more inexperienced team that want um, an experienced presence on their list to sort of help out in the in the short term. I think he's been linked to North Melbourne in particular, so that one would make sense to me. Anyway, guys, that is my recap of all the current AFL trade rumors. I didn't catch them all, as I said. If you want a good video uh, that sort of highlights all the ones being talked about, Mitch Ryan's done a really good video on his channel, so uh, it's definitely worth going checking out. Thanks for all your support lately. Uh, it's been great. We've got about a week till the grand final now. I'm super excited, but like I said, this trade content is going to continue even after that so uh, make sure you stick around for the channel let me know in the comments what your trade predictions are and uh you know general thoughts on some of the deals that i've highlighted hope you're enjoying the content if you do i'd appreciate you liking and subscribing and most importantly take care of yourselves and stay safe thanks guys i'll see you in the next video